Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Stephen Munitonis, and we're going to be talking about katsu. This is a device that helps you to boost your circulation, increase muscle mass, help with muscle building, but also helps with longevity as a whole. Now, Stephen is co-founder and CEO of Katsu Global, and he's a member of the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. He's a holder of a Guinness World Record, and he's a 1982 world champion in marathon swimming. So he is an athlete at heart. Interestingly enough, he used katsu to rehabilitate himself from a heart attack. And this is where he discovered how beneficial circulation is to, of course, your heart, your body, and your longevity as a whole. And so now he is sharing the katsu technology with the world. And today we're going to be talking about how cool this this technology is and why I think it's really important because so many people struggle with circulation, cold hands, cold feet, muscles that are atrophied because they're just not getting circulation to them. I've seen this happen with folks and, and we have no real reason why. I've also seen so many people struggle with lymphatic circulation, which goes hand in hand with your vessel elasticity. And this is what katsu does. It helps the body with it. It's an air device that really mimics circulation, contraction, and relaxation in the body. And Guess what? We struggle with circulation because we are all living in a fast-paced, sympathetic, fight-or-flight world, and we don't spend enough time in parasympathetic chill mode. And katsu helps you to maximize the effects of having good circulation. So I can't wait for you to listen to this podcast. It's a really fabulous one that will be no doubt interesting to you. All right, so let's jump into the podcast. Today, we're going to talk about how you can improve your vascular tissue and generate robust hormonal responses while sitting down. So Stephen, welcome to the Health Fix Podcast. And thank you very much. My pleasure to be here. So we have to probably first preface this with folks because a lot of folks are going to be thinking, why would I even want to improve my vascular tissue if I'm not an athlete, if I'm not trying to be an international marathon swimmer? What benefit does this have to me? Uh, uh, numerous benefits. The, the first is, is quite easy. When your vascular tissue, so your capillaries, veins, and arteries, when those walls are more elastic, that actually means your pipes are bigger, blood could go in and out much easier as they as it did when we were teenagers and young adults. And the older and older we get, generally, always exceptions, generally you, we become more sedentary. Mm-hmm. Maybe in our 20s, we went to gym, maybe we did runs, maybe we swam, rode, lift weights, et cetera. But as we get in our 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, we do less of that. However, we still need that adequate blood flow to go through our bodies. And uh, uh, concurrent to that, we need the hormonal response that we had when we were younger. Now, as we age, obviously, men and women go through uh, cycles and stages in our lives, but you still need some percentage of that original kind of daily hormonal response that you had in your youth in order to maintain a very healthful life? That's a long answer to a short question. Well, no, it it gives us perspective because I think for a lot of people and kind of, you know, in, in your history, you know, rehabilitating yourself from a heart attack, I think a lot of people, as we start getting into our 40s, we start to think, oh, no, we're getting older. You know, we see our cholesterol going up. Maybe we even see our blood pressure going up. And I think a lot of people do have the question of, does my blood flow change because I'm getting older or does it change because of hormonal responses changing with age? Is there anything I really can do with it or do I have to take a pill? Yeah. All of those things happen and all of those things can be done. The human body, it's a miracle what it does it, but it is 
without a doubt, the most resilient organism that we know of. I mean, our brain does trillions of interactions every moment. Our bodies are, are very resilient. You can get in an accident. You can have all kinds of illnesses. And the body is always ceasing, uh, always continuing to fight whatever disease, whatever broken bone, whatever torn ligament we have. And we can use things like katsu or sometimes medications, exercise, diet to actually maintain our level as high as we can. And I think people who are interested in uh, a long, healthful life are always seeking different ways that they can, they can increase their or maintain or increase their blood circulation and increase or maintain their hormonal responses as long as they can with as efficient means as possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I was fascinated when I saw the, the Katsu mo modality in and of itself. And then I saw the equipment with it. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Because of course, like I mentioned before, in, in the intro, a lot of us, especially in the CrossFit realm, us, us kind of DIYers, we would use the bands that we would use kind of like therapy bands. We were right. wrapping them around our biceps and things of that nature. And then trying to work out with that um, blood flow restriction and then take it off. And then we'd go, okay, do we feel any better? Has this done anything? And so I think a lot of people wouldn't necessarily equate that to longevity or helping with overall vascular health. It's almost like we, we dumbed it down to just that muscle we were working on. Yes. We have to look back at what Katsu is and mm -hmm. why it actually originated in the very first place. Yes. And it originated in Japan with a single doctor who actually spent the first 20 years just self-experimenting ex uh, on himself, family members, and those around him. And then in the 1990s, he thought he had the mechanism down. But as researchers, physicians, cardiologists, and others started to join his group, where I was a part of, we started to understand that the, the simple bands that you put around your arms, your legs, were leading to all kinds of different changes in the body. And that's when every, every year, literally, we discover more and more things that are happening in our body that are good for us. Again, in the beginning, back in the 80s and 90s, the idea was you could put these bands around your arms or legs and build muscle. And that was absolutely correct. That was, that was the goal. And that was the outcome that we were seeing. However, back then we didn't understand or Dr. Sato and the, the uh, academics, the researchers, the scientists, the doctors who are, who are working with him, they didn't understand completely the mechanism of which, how that was occurring. And then they were doing various, you know, experimental group, control group. They were doing MRIs. They were doing blood tests. They were, they were measuring different biomarkers that happened. And gradually, this whole body of, of information and new insights were coming along. And we're continuing along that path. And again, but again, it, 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 it comes down to two things. Increasing the elasticity of your vascular walls. And two that resultant hormonal response that we are getting. As we learn more and more about how this vascular tissue expands with mass spectrometers, with additional blood tests, et cetera, we're learning how many more elements, uh, metabolites, hormones are actually being produced. And those, those discoveries are answering the questions of why does this work? How does it work? If I'm 80, how does it work for me? If I'm 18, how can it work for me? So it's been a really interesting journey since Dr. Sato invented it way back when. I, I can imagine. I mean, I can imagine having having seen just what the blood flow restriction for musculature can do on our basic level, what it would do for the entire body. Now, with, with hormones... What have you guys seen? Will you share with, with my listeners, you know, what kinds of hormonal changes have, have showed up? What kind of things that you're getting with data? 
Yes. So, so I actually have the band. Uh, I have a dark shirt, so you can't see my <laughs> dark band, but I do have a band on this arm and I don't have a band on this arm. Okay. And then I don't know how good the zoom is, but you can see the, this is my normal skin color. And uh -huh. this is what we call my katsu color. It's pink, it's rosy. Uh -huh. And if you look at my hands, you can see this is my normal hand. And this is my hand with the veins being dilated. So what's happening right now with the band, the pr it's an inflatable band. It's very narrow. And when the air is inject or input in the band, the girth of the band decreases uh -huh. for only 30 seconds, decreases for 30 seconds, and then the air evacuates. And so you have pressure on for 30 seconds, pressure off for five seconds. And when you do that, you get this effect. So right now, my, my hand on this side is at homeostasis. It's just normal. Nothing's happening. And then on this hand, blood is going in. We call that the arterial flow is going from our torso out to my hand. And then the venous flow, which is from my hand or my foot back to my heart for 30 seconds is slightly slowed down or modified. So if this is my vein and the blood is coming out of the vein, it is very, very slightly compressed. And when it's slightly compressed, then this phenomenon occurs. So metabolically speaking, on a cellular level, my body, my brain knows that this arm is being exercised. And when we mean exercise, it doesn't mean a bicep curl. It doesn't mean a push-up. What it means is that vascular tissue is expanding as if I were doing a bicep curl or a push-up. So in a way, we're tricking the body through an inflatable band with a very brief time period, 30 seconds on, five seconds off, for a very brief period to believe or, or the, create a, a situation in the arm or the leg that I'm doing exercise. Hmm. That information on a cellular level is sent up my central nervous system, up to my brain, and then the brain reacts as it naturally does. And at that point, it believes that this arm is exercising and therefore it is producing through the pituitary gland, human growth hormone. So that is how we use, or that is the mechanism of katsu. Now the human growth hormone is a large molecule. And when it's, it, think of it like an aircraft carrier, if you will. Mm -hmm. In addition to that aircraft carrier that's going out in this armada, it's got smaller molecules or smaller boats that are going alongside it. So in addition to the human growth hormone, we have IGF-1, insulin growth factor, we have adrenaline, we have plasmologens, we have ceramides, and we have a bunch of other um, elements that we have documented. And when from the 80s, 90s to the current time with increased uh, scientific uh, uh, discoveries, we're learning how many more things if that armada, well, you, we thought it was only 10 ships, <laughs> it's actually 480 ships that are out there. And now that we know that certain elements are being produced because we're basically biohacking or tricking the body, now that we know that a thing like plasmologens are produced, that answers the question of when someone has a surgery or someone has a cut, maybe they're a skateboarder, maybe they got in a car accident, maybe they dropped the weight on their on their foot, whatever it is, and they have a laceration. We didn't understand 20 years ago, why if you did katsu, the skin would grow faster over that laceration. Why was a surgeon able to take out the sutures from your surgery in half the time? We didn't understand that mechanism as we were taking blood samples, putting it in a mass spectrometer, then we were discovering, oh my gosh, this and this and this are produced. And those are the things that help repair a cell wall, a damaged cell wall. So if you had, mm -hmm. let's say Tommy John surgery, yeah. if you're a baseball player or tennis elbow, whatever you have, 
why, why were these athletes getting back to the field of play quicker if they were using katsu? And all of these discoveries were leading us to understand the reason why. So now we have our observation, the laceration, the sutures are, are healing themselves faster. Why, as science progresses, then we learn all of these hormones and, and metabolites that are being produced by the simple inflation and deflation of a band. It seems almost too good to be true, but I, I do know that it is, you know, we've used, I've seen in hospitals to try to keep lymph and blood flow going. We've got these things that pump up in the legs right. and, and keep the blood flow mo moving too. And, and in my mind, I'm like, you, being an acupuncturist, let me, let me get back yeah. to that. Being an acupuncturist, I, I know from Chinese medicine, we have lots of different differentiations of blood flow issues like blood stagnation and chi stagnation and all these things. And of course the the Japanese also have a very similar thought process in terms of yeah. their their medicinal principles and and how the body works. It's fascinating that all we need to do is enhance our our circulation a little bit and to get better flow of all these molecules. And it sounds like oxygen too might flow better as well. Absolutely. So when you have that that uh, in not only when when the, the vein like this is is dilated, it's bigger. So now you have more volume of blood that's going through. Think of an athlete. So not only is the blood more blood going to the working muscle, but also when you are exercising or competing and you feel that discomfort of exercise or competition, that lactate buildup. Well, guess what? The lactate is whooshed out mm -hmm. faster because basically the blood is moving faster in the muscle and it's moving uh, blood out of the muscle faster. So you're getting more oxygenated blood to the working muscle. And then as the working muscle tires and lactate is built up, that discomfort feeling we, we feel, you know, we call it, some people call it race pain, you know, the last hundred meters of a, a mile run or, or a triathlon, whatever you have, now we're teaching our body or we're, we're teaching our body. We're, we're making our body more resilient to actually that increase elasticity, which is helping us both exercise or perform at a higher level and then recover at a faster level. So from an athlete's perspective, boy, if you mm -hmm. can get increased blood flow and remove lactate faster, you are going to compete better. Uh Absolutely. Absolutely. Which also leads me into even the average Joe who's not competing, but finds themselves pretty sore after a workout for more than just the customary two, three days, or even maybe someone with fibromyalgia in that case. Correct. I mean, although Katsu is used by a lot of athletes, uh, sure. we are in 49 countries um, in in the last Olympics in Tokyo, we had over a hundred medalists who were using katsu wow. in, in the Olympic village. <laughs> Even though that is a nice market for us, most of our uh, uh, users worldwide are people over the age of 50. And of that number, half, half of our worldwide users are women over the age of 50, half. And it, it is remarkable to me when I talk to a 55-year-old, 65-year-old, 75-year-old, whatever the age of the woman is, they are so interested in continued maintenance of their health. And they actually even, you know, how can I get better? Even at the age of 50, 60, 70, they're seeking to increase their longevity, their healthful longevity. And they're just very curious and, and, you know, not that men don't, but I <laughs> see this hunger uh, for women as they get older and they sort of steer their, their sort of emotional focus on from their children onto themselves as their uh, children age. And they've got this intense desire and they obviously an innate understanding of blood flow to go, Oh, I can do that. So, you know, my, the, the back of my arm is stronger, but really when, and we all get, go, have injuries throughout our life. You know, some are injured a lot, some are injured very rarely, but it could be as something as simple as a, a twisted ankle, a broken finger, 
Uh, maybe we fell from a bike. Maybe we're just lifting too much and we, we hurt our back. And in those cases, often we have to rehabilitate. So we're, we're sitting down, you know, maybe, maybe we had a, a knee injury or hip surgery, whatever it is, and we're less mobile than before. Well, those are the perfect times to use katsu because now I'm sitting here talking to you, my right arm, and you can see, so the veins yeah. here, you know, it, it, it's really working this. You can actually see, I can uh, see, see the yeah. difference in color between the, the arm at homeostasis and the katsu arm. If, you know, I won't do it, but if I had a tape measure, you could actually see this arm physically getting bigger just in this amount of time that we're talking. So if I had a hip injury or a knee surgery or I twisted my ankle and I wasn't able to be as mobile as before, it's okay. I could sit at my computer. I could sit on my couch. I can sit in my cubicle at work, do katsu and still maintain my health or my, my strength, my, my uh, vascularity, my muscularity simply by using these bands. Wow. I'm thinking about not even an injury, but sedentary jobs oh. where we don't get up and move as much. We're in front of a computer much more. You could be doing this while you're just like you're doing right now yes. while you're sitting yes. at work. Yes. And I mean, you know, we, we quite often you look at in the, the internet or whatever, and sitting is the new cancer. You know, we all sit much more than we did 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and 30 years ago. I mean, you know, when I started working, we were still using fax machines mm -hmm. and we had one fax machine in the office. Even sending a simple fax required me to get up out of my chair, walk down the hall, stand there, put the paper in, fax, and then come back. Well, now I just hit enter and email is off. So the, the amount of physical effort that we have in any eight hour job or if we're at home or we're in the office, these are the perfect times to use katsu and it's you know especially now in the zoom era you know mm -hmm. quite often what i do I'm, I'm here talking to you but we teach people hey if unfortunately there'll be some days you're just so busy at work or you're on a business trip and or you're traveling take the bands with you if you want to work on your core and you're on a telephone conference put the leg bands on stand on one leg as you're talking to or participating <laughs> in a teleconference. You're working on your core at the same time you're working on your quads and hamstrings. The, your counterparts don't have to know or they can know. It's, it's very, very convenient. But at the end of the day, these bands are just utilizing what the body naturally does anyway. Yeah. And that was the beauty of Dr. Sato's uh, invention. Which, which is fascinating because I mean, really, truly, as I've been in practice now, 18 plus years, the, the conditions I see that really lead to decline. And as people get older, it's, it's blood pressure stuff. It's cardiovascular stuff. It's, you know, decline of muscles, losing muscle and, and gosh, you know, genius stuff here. So you fascinated me about how you could have the bands on the legs and you're standing on one leg. And of course I, I have a standing desk here, so I'm standing on one leg now just because, wow. It's fun. Um, I'm I'm imagining like what what is a, a katsu like modelli like how would we incorporate it into the the day? Give us a little ex like experience. What would that be like if we had bands on our legs, say, or or what what could you do during a, a meeting, for example? So uh, I'll, I'll I'll just give a theoretical example. Sure. Let's say I'm I'm live in uh, Southern California, and let's say I have a business trip to New York City. Okay. So in the morning, I get up. I'm going to wash my face. I'm going to brush my teeth. I'm going to prepare a short breakfast before I, I get on the road to the airport. So the first thing I do is I get up. I might take a shower, put the bands on my arms. I'm putting it on a low, low pressure setting, just a low pressure setting. It's basically a nice little warm up for the rest of the day. I know it's going to be a long day. I'm going to have to be in the LAX airport. I'm going to have to be at the <laughs> Newark or JFK airport. There are going to be long lines. Just got to calm myself down and deal with the crowds and the security and all that kind of stuff. So beginning morning, armbands on my arms, 
as I'm just walking around the house doing stuff. Even the micro movements of brushing my teeth or in the case of a woman, maybe putting on mascara, uh, brushing your hair, whatever you're doing, it's amazing how pumped mm -hmm. your arm feels when you simply have the bands on and you're brushing your teeth or you're blow drying your hair, whatever you're doing. So that's the morning session. Get in the car, drive to LAX, park the car, get to the gate. Usually I'm a little late, so I'm a little rushed. Um, you know, sometimes I'm running to the gate. <laughs> now I get in the airplane and I'm finally, go, okay, I made it. Um, I can relax. But I've got a five hour flight. I can throw the bands either on my arms or legs in the flight. And that will relax me. It will actually help me take a short nap on the plane. It actually, what happens is you've got blood, especially in your legs. And you, a lot of people probably use compression socks when yeah. they're flying. Same principle applies. We're just increasing the circulation of the legs in the flight. Finally land, get a taxi or get a bus to the hotel, get in the hotel. I have a business meeting the next morning. I've got a little bit of jet lag. I'm in the hotel room. I am doing whatever I'm doing, looking at emails, et cetera. In the hotel room, we teach Katsu user that is a gym. That is a rehab center. You've got water bottles. Those are your dumbbells. You have a, 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 a desk. You could do push-ups. Hmm. You don't have to get down on the ground and get in a prone position. With the bands, you could do simple wall push-ups or push-ups on the desk. You've got a bed, great for uh, squats, for for leg curls, whatever whatever you do. So we we actually have a, a training program where we teach people, and sometimes we teach people who are in law enforcement, and they are encouraged nowadays not to go down to the fitness gym. So we teach them, go into your ho hotel room, look at what you have, and that is your gym as long as you have your cod spans on. You can build up a sweat, you can build up a pump, and reverse, let's say it's, it's 11 o'clock at night, and I know my day starts at 6 in the morning, but I'm still on West Coast time, I throw on the bands again. And this time I put very, very low pressure on my arms and I do no movement whatsoever. Or if I'm a little stressed, I could do some shoulder rolls forward, shoulder rolls back. What that does is it actually loosens up or, or relaxes the muscles of your neck. It's late at night, sleep comes more easily, sleep, deep sleep comes more quickly, take the bands off. So that would be a typical, what we would call a three session day of katsu. I haven't interrupted anything I'm going to do during the course of the day. What we do is we're double stacking. I'm going to brush my teeth anyway. I'm going to be sitting in the airplane anyway. I'm going to be uh, in my hotel room anyway. I'm just throwing my bands on at different parts of the day to do to accomplish different things. And it's all, you know, as an acupuncturist, you can understand that modification of the blood flow can lead to even a moderate uh, uh, hormonal response is going to relax you. That, that activation of the parasympathetic, uh, parasympathetic nervous system at night will allow me, even if I have a little bit of jet lag, to relax, close my eyes, and fall into a deep sleep. So that's a, another long question to a, a short answer, a short question. No, it's, it's great because I think, I think a lot of people are like, okay, this isn't something like I have to do an extra, you know, hour of my day where I have to set it up and things of that nature. It sounds like they're pretty easy to put on. Sounds like it's pretty easy to take with you. And what you were mentioning with the three, three approaches during the day, there's different pressure levels yeah. that you can now, how, how does the machine work? Cause I know that there's three different types of, of machines that I saw on yeah. the website and, and yeah. that. There's, so I think we'll probably now get into little technicalities, but yeah, give us, give us the scoop in terms of how, how it is adjusted, yeah. what different levels and how, how to go from there. Yeah. So I'll, I'll put this up to the screen. So this is our sort of our workhorse model. It's, it's handheld. It's got a little um, buckle in the back. So you can put on, you know, in your, in your gym shorts, on your, in your pants, in your shirt, etc. cetera. Um, this was, we, 
Navy SEALs helped design this for us. They gave mm -hmm. us a lot of input. This is called our C3 model, our third generation. Our second generation, we put out, we had a lot of military uh, special forces uh, officer or, uh, personnel use them. They gave us a lot of good feedback and, and this was the result. It's got bands and inside here, it's quite simple. It's a, it's a circuit board, a battery and a uh, compressor that pushes air from these tubes to the band. And then in here, you've got, you've got it here, either a custom uh, constant mode where if I want to do something complicated, like work on my golf swing, um, uh, a practice sparring, um, uh, I'm a track athlete and I'm a hurdler, something where the tubes would get in the way, mm -hmm. I would use the constant mode and then simply detach the tubes from the band. Now I'm not worried about these tubes at all. I can mm. jump over the hurdles. I can do my golf swing. I could do my baseball swing. I could do a variety of things that might, the tubes might get in the way. And that includes gymnasts. Mm -hmm. It includes pianists. Anybody who's doing movement where these, where these tubes might get in the way, you can always detach. And so in those cases, you would use the constant mode. Okay. The, I'm sorry. The cycle mode is that 30 seconds on five seconds off. Once you select that, then it asks, do you have the bands in your arms or your legs? And I have it on my arms, or you could do the legs. The reason why the arms and legs are different is the band is different for the arms versus the legs. Obviously our legs are bigger. And so for the same amount of pressure, we need to tell the computer inside, put more air because we're doing legs. Then we, you know, we select arms. Then we have low pressure, medium pressure, high pressure, and then custom pressure. Mm -hmm. Custom is for people who use a lower than the low pressure and higher than the high pressure. So let's say you're an older person, you have cardiac issues, you might be uh, uh, very overweight, et cetera. You might want to use a very, very low pressure. Let's say you're a Navy SEAL. Let's say you're extremely competitive athlete, NCAA uh, division one player, whatever. You might wanna go higher than high. But in general, we have these, uh, you know, low, medium, high is takes care of 90% of people. And then the custom takes care of either people who are sedentary and weak or extremely fit and strong. Uh, use the custom, we select that. And then we have a number of sets one and it goes up to six each of these um, sets is five minutes long so if i want to do 30 minutes of work i just set this to uh, uh six cycles hit hit the center button and then uh, i can hear it i don't know if you can hear it yep. then the compressor is starting to push out air into the bands and i do my 30 minute workout hmm. if in the if in the workout I was going, let's say I was going from uh, an easy exercise, let's say hand clenches to let's say lat pull or something where I'm more powerful. I can always change this to a low pressure to a high pressure, or let's say I'm on a treadmill, a slide board, a elliptical bicycle, whatever. And let's say I'm going at a moderate pace. Well, I'm going to have a low pressure. I'm sorry, a moderate pace. I'll have a high pressure. And then let's say I'm going to do a sprint, you know, total out, out sprint mm -hmm. for, let's say I'm doing a Tabata workout or whatever, then I would put a lower pressure. And so mm -hmm. you can adjust the pressures according to the movements and the exercise and your individual goals. And that goes true for rehabilitation. Let's say you had some kind of uh, uh, injury and you're at the physical therapy uh, therapist's office and he or she is directing you to do it a variety of movements. Well, some movements, you can handle the high pressure. Other movements, you, you can only handle the low pressure. So this machine allows you to toggle back and forth, depending on your movement, your exercise and your goals. That's cool. That's cool. I like the flexibility. 
I'm guessing that a lot of people right now might be listening going like, Steve, is there a guide for this? Is Does the website tell me what to do? Is there a manual? How they, do we get they, to we it? Have, <laughs> unfortunately, we have too much information. We have <laughs> uh, gigantic uh, text. Um, we have, you know, uh, other books that have more cartoon uh, figures for, for, you know, easy to understand. But then what we also do, and, and this is where we believe um, it is very, very important. Everybody is different. Mm -hmm. you know? e even a husband and wife, they could be the exact same age. They just have different lifestyles, different goals. So people email us or email or call us all the time. We have Zoom, free Zoom uh, webinars twice a week. Um, people from around the world join and they just fire away at questions. And sometimes the questions are very, very easy. Like, uh, when do I go from low to medium pressure? And sometimes they're very complicated. I have diabetes, I have chronic fatigue syndrome, and, um, you know, I have uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, what do I do? Mm -hmm. And so we, we dissect each of those questions um, in a in a zoom call, and we talk people through how to use it. So this is actually where we spend most of our time the equipment itself once we designed it is sort of we did it and we we move on mm -hmm. but actually the how to the applications and the protocols this is where we spend 90 95 percent of our time teaching people of all ages how do they actually use this to their benefit I mean, I think that's incredibly valuable because a lot of people would be, I would imagine even myself, just because I'm a geek and want to know, but I would imagine a lot of people would be like, okay, I'm going to put this band here. Then I have to take this machine and do what, you know, and how do I do it again? So yeah. I was making sure that there's good support there too for everyone. Yeah. And I mean, even imagine a track team, a track and field team, mm -hmm. you've got sprinters, you've got middle distance runners, and you have distance runners. You have shot putters, javelin throwers, pole vaulters, <laughs> long jumpers, high jumpers. I mean, the, the various movements that the humans do on a track and field team is incredible. And simply showing up at a track and, and me teaching katsu to the coaches can be very, very uh, uh, intricate and comprehensive. Mm -hmm. it, you know, when the track team what the sprinters are doing from the 100 and 200 meter dash is completely different from the discus thrower and the shot putters. And they're, they're seeking different things. So a shot putter, a distance or I mean, a discus thrower, you know, they need a lot of power, explosive power in a very uh, defined movement, even a hundred meter dash, you know, the start, the acceleration, and then the, the uh, finish of the race, they all require different things. You've got four limbs going at once and there's no human who is perfectly symmetrical <laughs> true you know, we all have a, a stronger or weaker side some like usain bolt and some michael phelps etc they are very very equal in terms of their their uniformity left and right side upper and lower body not everybody is that most people aren't that same. So we teach people, Hey, if you're weak on your left side, especially if you're somebody like a base, a basketball player, and you're not as strong going to your left side as you go to the right side, then we teach people how to use the bands. And so you simply put a higher pressure on your weaker side. Huh. So in other words, and that goes true. If you had a cast on your arm or leg, your, your leg in without katsu will atrophy without with katsu it doesn't have to atrophy so we can make different parts of our body left side versus right side upper body versus lower body stronger using different pressures in our four limbs and this <laughs> gives coaches trainers and physicians a lot of flexibility to actually tackle the very problem that they're their athlete or their patient or their client is looking for. That's pretty, that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. Now, one of the things that folks might be thinking about is like, okay, Steven, you were a swimmer and I know that there's Katsu Aqua. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about that? Cause I think folks might be like, can you actually use it in the water? Can you, yes. can you swim with yeah. it? Yes. So we use it, uh, we use it a lot with Olympic uh, medalist swimmers, a lot. Um, and we use it for their reaction time. So 
let's say they're up on the starting block and we've, you know, we've all seen sort of Michael Phelps up there and, and other American heroes up there. We put the bands on their legs. And again, these bands, because of Navy SEALs, are actually made of neoprene. Mm. They're actually wetsuit material. And so these can go in the water. Now, the unit itself can't go in the water. This, we, we didn't waterproof this, but the bands are. And because we can detach the unit from the band, what the swimmers do, or anybody who's doing aqua therapy, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of, you know, we work a lot with the soldiers, and they do a lot of aqua therapy because of broken bones, because of spinal cord injuries, uh, because of PTS, uh, or PTSD, traumatic brain injury, et cetera. They're doing a lot in the water. Mm-hmm. And that hydrostatic pressure, in addition to the katsu, works wonders. So you inflate the band at a certain pressure, you know, depending on what you want to achieve. And then you simply go in the water with this. If you're a competitive swimmer or a triathlete or someone in, let's say, extreme sports, they're going to do something in the water. It could be a paddler, a stand-up paddler, a kayaker, somebody like that. You can actually use this in the water. These are waterproof and it, there's no problem. If you're injured and you do, and you're using katsu, what we call kats aqua therapy, same thing. You're going to be in shallow water. You're going to be moving your limbs in a certain way. We have a lot of track athletes who have um, heel injuries, um, uh, foot injuries, uh, 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 toe sprains, whatever we have, whatever they have. And they simply <laughs> <laughs> run in the water with the cuts bands. And because they're so used to the the pressure on dry land running, we can equate that or or without katsu, they can't equate that kind of pressure because their bodies are buoyant in the water. But when we put the katsu bands on, we can actually enable them to run in the water with the same degree, with their same heart rate, the pulse that they normally feel on dry land. Wow. So their recovery, I'm sorry, their rehabilitation and recovery time is very, very good for their stamina and speed. Wow. That's really cool. That's really cool. Now, one thing I have in mind is how far can you go away from the little pack before uh, they don't communicate anymore? Yes. So now you're talking, so th- this is our, uh, what we call our C3 unit, which is the, the uh, connected device. We also have our B or B platform, which are Bluetooth platform. And what we did is we, ah, shoot, I don't have it here, but um, we have this and we miniaturized it. And then we put that on the band itself. And then you actually communicate on the, uh, and I'll pull it up here. We communicate on your smartphone with the controller. We set it at 50 meters so you can, you can make your choices, what you want to do with the unit up to 50 meters away. Why 50 meters? Because you, the athletes can put their phones in the middle of the field on the 50 yard line or the middle of the pitch. If they're doing rugby or soccer, put their phones in the middle of the field and they're only going to run 50 (laughs) yards that way or 50 meters that way and 50 yards or 50 meters that way. And the, the width of the field is okay. So that's how we use it. It's 50 meters. Some, uh, you know, at 60 meters, 70 meters, it's still, it's still uh, there, but sometimes it gets a little wonky. Uh, but really on the Bluetooth model, 50 meters is, is uh, how far you can go. And, you know, if you're most gyms, it's not 50 meters long, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. So you put your phone where, you know, where your towel is, your shoes are, whatever, and you can walk around the gym and you will always be connected. Very cool. Very cool. So let's talk a little bit about the three options that you do have of the, the Katsu. Cause it seems like the B1 version is kind of the most popular and then you got C3 and then you've got the M3. So, or B1, I guess we just talked about in terms of Bluetooth. Yeah. So get, give us the scoop in terms of the three, because I think we talk C3 in terms of the most of the stuff today. Sorry. Yeah. So backwards. the C3 is, is uh, our most, this is actually our most popular unit again, because most of our users are older people. Mm-hmm. This is very simple. You touch a few buttons and it works. 
the B1 is much more sophisticated. And so you can, you can track your perfusion index, your, your pleth variability index, your heart rate, your uh, respiratory rate, et cetera. So for the people who really like to geek out and nerd out on all kinds of physiological things that are happening in the body, the B1 is the way to go. I mean, it is, it is nerdville. It is, it is really, really uh, interesting. And the good thing about it is when the athletes do travel, let's say they're a, a collegiate athlete, or let's say they're Olympic athlete, or just a competitive athlete, and you're, you're going to another state or another area, your coach or your teammates aren't with you, you can share your data from mm. your phone to them, just like you do on a Fitbit or Whoop device. So we wanted to make your team or your community of people always be knowledgeable of what you do, if you so opt in. And then the last one is what, where we sell to hospitals or clinics. And this is our desktop version. It has a giant um, uh, uh, tablet on there. And all of the features of this and all the features of this are built into that we call our institutional model or, or big desktop model. There, the, the user can actually see in real time their heart rate, their perfusion index, their respiratory rate, et cetera. And so we use that in hospitals when people just feel more comfortable, that they're putting on the bands for the first time, they're not quite sure what's happening. And all of a sudden they have this screen and they can see their own data, their heart rate <laughs> and all this data there. It really puts them at ease, but it also gives the physician or the, the practitioner the opportunity to explain to the person Hey, we're putting these bands on. They're snug. They're not a. They're not a blood pressure cuff, and we get your, uh, let's say, your SpO two, your oxygen saturation at. You know, it's going to go from ninety six percent, let's say, to ninety nine percent. The person may not even know what SpO two is for. Sure. But now they can see it on a screen with the bands on and the healthcare professional can explain to them why you want a higher oxygen saturation rate than a lower one. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's really a, so we have a, a handheld one, a wire or a, a Bluetooth one, and then we have an institutional one that sort of puts all of that together in one for the benefit of the, the user and then the healthcare professional. Makes sense. Makes sense in office use. And then ultimately, of course, you would want your folks to have their own at home so that they could do it outside of the office, which yes. would be my my thought, too, for folks. Yes. And um, of course, because I, I nerd out, I honed in on the B1 because... <laughs> I am that type of person. And I'm like, I, I got to try this out. I'm also thinking, you know, right now we, we've talked all about the benefits. Are there any major contraindications that folks should know about at this point in terms of using COTC devices and, yes. and therapy? So it, most definitely. And we, we do have a long list of do's and don'ts and the don'ts must be followed. Um, mm -hmm. Now, if they're not followed, the more likely thing that will happen is the user will get lightheaded. Mm -hmm. In the worst case, they're going to faint. And okay. of course, you don't want to faint at home. You don't want to faint in the gym. And what are those don'ts? The don'ts are don't put on the band too tightly. Don't leave on for hours on end. I mean, they're, they're sort of um, common sense. However, we do have a lot of type A personalities who figure if half an hour is good, an hour is better, and if hour is better, two hours is best. And that is a lot of metabolic stress on the body, a lot. And we, you know, we've had people, or we had actually one case where a person put the band on, used it in the constant mode, so they, they disengaged the tubes, they were in front of the TV and fell asleep. So they fell asleep with the bands on. Now, what happened was he was an older gentleman. He woke up and, you know, his, his hand was literally numb simply because not only did he have the band on too tightly, he had it on too long, but when he fell asleep, he fell oh, against no. things. So, so this, oh, no. it wasn't meant to be a, it is not a tourniquet, but because he was sitting on an inflated band, 
it was in effect a tourniquet. And again, he had his hand up, so he didn't have much blood in his hand. So we have these protocols, these, these do's and don'ts that we want everybody to follow because we don't want anybody to get lightheaded. We don't want anybody to faint. Some of those include if you're training at altitude in mm, Colorado mm-hmm. uh, Springs at the Olympic Training Center in Park City, Utah, different places where you're up at altitude, use a lower pressure. The reason why is when you do katsu and the blood, the venous flow is modified, your blood that is in the lip becomes deoxygenated. Well, you're at high altitude, you have less oxygen intake, you have deoxygenated blood. And if you're doing something aerobic, uh, riding a bicycle, running burpees, et cetera, you can get lightheaded. So yes. we, you know, we have these protocols for a reason, but before we launched um, outside of Japan, we did a 10 year study from 2004 to 2014 with over 12,000 patients. Most of them were older. We did that because we wanted to make sure that COTS was one in all cases safe and in two uh, effective. And there we did a 10 year study. We did all that. We spent lots of money when we were satisfied with that 10 year study, then we stopped and then we, uh, we stopped that project. And then we uh, started to uh, develop design and market the, the current product. So we're very confident. Our oldest user is 104 years Ooh. old. We put a 22% we built up her muscle mass in her lower body, her quads and her hamstrings at 22% at the age of 104. So we proved without a shadow of a doubt, it's all documented that sarcopenia doesn't have to happen and it can be reversed. We did it on a 104 year old. We've done it on a bunch of 90 year olds. And so um, it's a really exciting, fun um Uh, thing that we're doing. And we just like to share it with more and more people. Oh, that is a great story. I'm thinking about my dad who's 87 and is doing fairly well, but he has been complaining like, oh, I feel like I'm losing my muscles. And I'm like, well, maybe we need to get one of these on you. So of course you probably have protocols and things for for folks who are DIYing it themselves too in in this case. Yes. And, you know, for people in their 80s and 90s, you know, they're generally not going out they're generally, most of them don't, you know, drive their own cars, although many of them do. And so we have, a, just like we, we tell the business people and young athletes about how to use a hotel, how to see a hotel room as their gym, we do the same thing with our older folks. And we say, look at your home. This is a gym. You're going to be folding clothes. You're going to be wiping the countertop. You're going to be uh, cleaning windows. You're going to be doing a Uh, raking leaves, shoveling snow, you're going to be doing all these things around your house. Anyway, throw on the bands, if you want to work on your shoulders, do it while you're, uh, you know, using a broom, do it while you're using a rake. If you have carpal tunnel syndrome, if you have some kind of arthritic pain, go in a certain, you know, take a wet rag and just wipe the countertop off, wipe your kitchen table off, you know, circle this way, circle that way. If you, you know, remember the wax on wax <laughs> off, that same sort of, uh, 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 mantra we teach our older folks to do. We even teach people who are morbidly obese shut-ins. And so they, they, they're so large, they don't go out of their home. We ask them, what do you do most of the day? They're watching TV. Okay. Take your remote control with the bands on and just change the channel. That is their exercise. Once they're they're able to do that in a week, now take that remote control, take two remote controls, and those are your bicep uh, uh, curl dumbbells. And gradually we, okay, you're gonna go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom, when you come back, put the leg bands on, just stand for 10 seconds. Okay, tomorrow, 15 seconds, the next day, 20 seconds. So we. We view a hotel room, your, your own home, apartment, condominium as a place where you can exercise easily, uh, uh, conveniently, and by yourself to get all the benefits that the athletes see anyway. Wow. So cool. It's so cool. Stephen, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. And definitely the story of the 104-year-old is is 
awesome to me. I definitely want to be one of those folks who's keeping my muscles up all the way through to 100 and whatever. Lots of good stuff here. So if folks want to take a look at what the Katsu device can do for them and and the therapy can do, it's K-A-A-T-S-U dot com, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. And there we go. There we go. K-A-A-T-S-U. And where else can folks, are you guys on Instagram? Are you on Facebook? Do you have all that on your website? Yes, we're on. We, we. Uh, unfortunately, we do most of our work as engineers and and coaches and trainers. We we do have uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and we have a lot of information there. It's not. I admit we're we're all old guys here, so we're not the cutting edge of the TikTok uh, or Instagram world. But we do have information there, and you can you can see what other people are doing. You can also go to our. Um, uh, twice weekly webinars okay. and we we answer any question that you have and uh, the questions range from anything you can imagine wow wow and those are free to anybody you don't have to have free to anybody okay and i can provide you with the uh, uh yes. zoom link Yes, yes. I would love to put that. And guys, we'll put that in our podcast notes at drjkrausnd.com. Because yes, I I think the more we can know about these things and the benefits and circulation is something that is just, I think it's one of the things we need to protect as we get older, because how do we get the blood flow to the brain, to the heart, to the muscles and keep ourselves going if if it's not working optimally? So this is is great stuff. Great stuff. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing all your information and even doing the demo. Will you do one more time? When you were holding your hands together like this, you could see it Uh, really well. I've actually taken the band off. You took it off. (laughs) So, but that's how quickly the body reverts. So again, I had a a, a very rosiness of my arms, my uh, my hand and my my veins were, were popping out. But as soon as you take the bands off, the body goes back to homeostasis. And that that's very comforting for people especially older people to know like i'm not gonna you know especially women who don't want to get all veiny don't worry about it the 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 elasticity of veins are gonna only last when you have the bands on now there's some guys who love that vascularity (laughs) and you know obviously when there's some athletic women do too so um you know the body is very resilient it's it's a it's a miracle what it does inside and cuts is just utilizing the body's natural mechanisms for our benefit at the end of the day that's all these bands and all this equipment does it utilizes what our body is going to do anyway to our benefit i i can see it i can see it i'm even imagining as you're mentioning about the veiny thing that some guys might try to use it a little bit before they head out to, to the bar. And- oh my gosh. We, <laughs> we have college guys do, I mean, they are, they put it on and I've, I've, I've taught lots of, we are in about 80 colleges. The guys love it, especially if they can get ripped more ripped abs. But I said, Hey, look it, if you're going to go out on Friday night, if you're, you're going to meet those sorority girls and vice versa, uh, vice versa, put on the bands and just pump up. So these things are really popular in the frat houses and all of this. And they're also popular in sorority houses. Same, same reason, same goals. Oh my goodness. So there you have it. Not only is the Katsu great for your health and longevity, it's also great for your dating as well. Yes. <laughs> Love it. Yes. Love it. Oh, Stephen, thank you so much for sharing that and coming on. And gosh, great stuff. I can't wait to share this one with the folks. Thanks again. Thank you very much. Bye. Hey, Health Junkies, are you feeling just off, feeling like you're aging a little bit faster than you want to and wondering what in the world is up? Hey, I might have some answers for you and some direction. If you want to chat with me, I am offering complimentary calls right now. You can head over to Dr. Spelled Out J. K-R-A-U-S-E-N-D dot com. Take my quiz, click on the schedule of chat, and let's talk and see if we can get you in the right direction. And if I'm able to help you, I'm going to let you know. Otherwise, I'm going to help you find what you're looking for. Head over to drjkrausnd.com and check it out. 
Hey, fellow health junkie, thanks for listening to the Health Fix Podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.